TRS Clips, the place you arrive at if you just want the best bits of India's smartest podcast, The Ranveer Show. Subscribe, hit that bell icon. What do you think actually happens in the outer ocean? Because you, again, are fascinated by geopolitics. You study that. Uh, do you think do you think experiments happen out there? Like, related to the ocean bed, related to, I don't know, nuclear testing? There's plenty happening at the ocean floor. There are all these undersea cables and, and acoustic uh, detectors and all that that the US government and the Russians have also put up to listen to, uh, to submarines of the other side. So that's one thing. There's also a lot of prospecting on the ocean floor because there are so many nuggets of metals and minerals and all that that's available on the ocean floor. I think there's uh, thousands of tons of gold somewhere in the ocean, you know. Some may be concentrated, some may be diffuse or, and all that. So there's lots happening that we don't know about. It yeah. won't be disclosed by most governments. And I'm sure there's a there's a contest going on, geopolitical contest also. Or for what? For minerals? For, uh, for, for, for of spying on each other, for locating minerals, or for exploiting the ocean bed in certain regions. There's a South China Sea going on, thing going on also. Mm. And there's also, I mean, we do not know anything about the uh, un- undersea world. There must be so many species out there that we don't know yeah. about. People have said that there may be even dinosaurs living somewhere down mm-hmm. there. So there's the the ocean is a big mystery. Mm. We think we know everything about the planet. We know next to nothing about the oceans at least. You know? yeah, it's yeah. a big mystery. Yeah, uh, only 5% of the oceans are explored. May, so, most likely, yeah. So imagine how much is out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. We actually did one entire podcast with uh, New from Abhi and New. Okay. And uh, we spoke about how basically... Um, at the time, in medieval times, oceans were, were more explored than they are today. I mean, they're still explored today. But that time, ocean travel and all that, like as in before aeroplanes, yeah. was a lot more prevalent yes, uh, yes. activity. Yeah. And that's why there were so many more spottings of sea monsters, etc., mm. etc. Et we talk about Hydra, you talk about giant squids, uh-huh. etc. Yes. Um, they were just more spotted because the oceans were used more. Uh, maybe if we travel out there in the oceans a little bit more, we might spot some. We stuff. might. I mean, the, the field of cryptozoology is still a very, very vibrant field. I am sure there are many species, even large species, that we have not discovered yet. Are you are you fascinated by zoology? I used to be fascinated by cryptozoology when I was a kid. What know? is cryptozoology? It is the study or the or this or the search for unknown species of mm. animals, especially under the sea, like the Loch Ness monster and. Uh, various other cryptids they're called cryptids you know the large monsters yeah la- mo- it's usually large monsters you know mm. you're talking about large big monsters that will scare the hell out of you, you know like mm. the kraken and the giant octopus and things like that yeah so yeah it's a very fascinating field and, and because it's it's sure to be some there's uh, certainly something out there you know that we don't know about mm. so it's um so you know um so i was reading about megafauna yeah uh so megafauna for the people who don't know is so people think that in ancient times there was just dinosaurs. Then eventually we we sort of started seeing mammals uh, after the dinosaurs got extinct, and the mammals kept evolving, and now we're left with the animals we know today. But there was this really long period with something called megafauna, and this is before human beings walked the earth. Um, so are you are you familiar with megafauna? Sir? Yes. Uh, so okay, I'll just give a quick kind of lowdown, and please feel free to add the scientific perspective on this because megafauna is like one of my obsessions <laughs> growing up, especially after I saw this movie called The Ice Age. Seen this yes, I have movie? seen it. Yes, where they show saber-toothed tigers yes. and mammoths. Mammoths, and, yeah. Uh, so mega for mega means large. Fauna is animals. Um, now, uh, basically, animals the way they were naturally evolving at one point in the planet's history is that they kept evolving to become bigger because the bigger the animal got, the more advantages they had. Then eventually, what started happening is that the animals became so big that they became too cumbersome, like too heavy and big to hunt. And therefore, eventually, they started like becoming smaller again. But the megafaunas that were still alive after a point were hunted by humans because they were easy targets for groups of humans to get together and kill off. And that was the reason why human beings became what we are today. There was this whole phase of human beings not being at the top of the food chain, the early Homo sapiens, where human beings would probably be scavengers because we had evolved from monkeys. Yeah. So we were the creatures that would go up, see, okay, lions have killed that particular prey. Yeah. And imagine lions had killed like a giraffe or an elephant or some megafauna. 
okay the lions would come eat and then go away to probably hunt somewhere else when they'd gone away we would go quickly take our food yeah and that's how humans ate up till a certain point up till the point where our brains evolved enough to learn to collaborate ki okay no if we all get together we'll probably be able to kill a giraffe or an elephant or a mammoth ourselves so the moment humans learned how to collaborate they started extinguishing the megafauna because the megafauna was so big it was easy to kill it was an easy target it was slow and big and easy to hunt now this is when human beings were mainly in africa homo sapiens were mainly uh, centered in africa and also keeping that in mind ancient human history is not that documented like it's it's heavily as you call it fragmented history yeah. like we we barely know anything about it but the, the these are the general theories that are agreed upon uh eventually once human beings started spreading out of africa into asia they started killing off the megafauna there as well uh now the megafauna started evolving again for survival into smaller versions of itself which is why they say that the saber tooth tiger is an ancient ancestor of the modern day lion or tiger saber tooth tigers were a lot larger a lot more cumbersome and then they eventually evolved into the slightly smaller lion or the tiger that we know of today and those animals were small enough to not be hunted I mean, they're still large animals, but they were smaller than what megafauna was. Similarly, the mammoth evolved into the elephant, which is a slightly smaller version of uh, the ancient woolly mammoth. So, human beings spread into Asia, and then once they reached Indonesia, they kind of hit Australia. Now, Australia was a landmass that wasn't occupied by human beings at all. Yeah. And human beings had probably spent thousands of years in Africa and Asia killing off the megafauna. but australia was untouched which allowed all the animals there to evolve free of human beings so as the animals in africa and asia evolved those animals learned to avoid human beings and they learned to develop a fear of human beings that these monkey creatures are going to come at us and kill off all of us so let's run away from them so they have a natural fear of human beings probably inbuilt genetically in them have you seen that video of those Uh, African tribal guys going running towards the lion. They scare off the lion. I have together. seen that. Yes, yes. Incredible video. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an ancient uh, tribal hunting technique. Technique, where, yeah. Where they steal the lion's uh, meat, whatever meat. it is. Yeah. yeah, whatever the lion has killed, they go together. They collaborate, scare it off together. Yeah. Like three guys run with spears. So spears. It, yeah. it looks like one big monster running at the lion. The lion yeah. gets scared. But the Australian megafauna was not um, kind of didn't have any fear of uh, human beings. So if the humans came up to the megafauna there they wouldn't react and a lot of them were herbivores. So I think there's some stat like in the first 1000 or 2 2000 years of human beings reaching Australia the Australian continent uh they wiped off almost all the megafauna in Australia. So a lot of the uh, megafauna that was present the fossils that are found are nowhere to be seen and some of the descendants of that megafauna are kangaroos, koalas all these australian animals that you hear about because human beings wiped out all the megafauna there so the nature of human beings since ancient times has always been destructive it's always been that like way. fuck up ecology fuck Absolutely. up the animals uh so this is what i found fascinating about megafauna we are the super predator of this of this planet yeah. we have uh, climbed to the pinnacle of the food chain i think what happened was that once we became bipedal once we started walking on two two feet that's when our perception of the world changed and we our brain had to start taking in lots of more input than you would usually take if you were mm. if you were crawling on the ground and that's why the brain had to adapt and become larger and that led to an increase in intelligence which led to the kind of adaptation we see of our cooperative behavior social behavior which again wep- became weaponized in uh, things like hunting and all that mm. so we were able to band together and kill much larger animals mm. for instance uh, you had this megatherium it's an enormous giant sloth so we humans wiped it out in uh, on mauritius island i think we wiped out the dodo over there mm. and like you said in australia all the ancient uh, marsupial megafauna was yeah. wiped out i think marsupials are kangaroos things with pouches pouches right? yeah mm. there are lots of pouch uh, uh, animals with pouches there on on mm. on australia mm. so we wiped out many of the megafauna there we wiped out the woolly mam- mammoths about 10000 years ago mm. and so many more so we are a very pred- pred- predatory and war like species if we can't find something to kill we'll find each other to kill <laughs> yeah that's the kind of thing it is you know have you have you read about how jurassic park is becoming a real thing no i haven't like apparent have you seen jurassic park i right? have yeah. sure. how they extract the dna from yes yes uh, mosquitoes that are frozen in amber yeah, yeah yeah uh so apparently i believe i read an article where they're trying to bring the woolly mammoth back to life that's that's a project that has been going on for decades Okay. I think Japanese scientists were trying to do that in the 1980s 
they did find uh, frozen mammoths but i don't know if it ever frozen progressed. mammoths yeah in siberia it's a, this is a region of permafrost where it's always frozen so animals that died there 20 30 000 years ago are found in almost intact wow so you can certainly extract the dna and all that certainly but does modern day science allow you to actually create a clone or whatever of that that is the main question i i don't see why you cannot create a clone of that you may need to use um, the egg from an actual living day living elephant but i'm sure you can inject the genetic material from a mammoth into it mm. and then impregnate one poor female elephant and have her bear woolly mammoth child or something mm. i think theoretically technically it's possible i'm not sure how much it's progressed if there is any project going on but mm. it's certainly a possibility mm. genetics is is evolving rapidly as we know very well mm. you know let's kind of highlight one last aspect of cryptozoology uh, you know because it's a, it's a subject that fascinates me as well this is about the lost dinosaur that they found in the congo that supposedly in the congo right so there is this uh, there is a story of an undiscovered creature in i think the congo jungles yeah. they call it the mokele mbembe or something like that yeah. and when these natives draw the animal it looks like a dinosaur stegosaurus right stegosaurus of some kind yes it looks mm. like a stegosaurus and many europeans have gone there and tried to find it but they have never been able to find it these guys it it looks like only the natives can see certain or can track down certain species for yeah. instance even in tibet and um, sikkim etc there is this yeti Mm. We've heard of the yeti, right? The abominable mm. snowman. That's mm. what the white people call it. Mm. So only the natives seem to be able to locate that animal. Yeah. But uh, whenever Europeans go searching for it, they can't find it. Yeah. I, th- I think people, until you have experienced life as an outdoorsman or outdoors person, and you've explored nature, you underestimate the size of nature. Um, there's two things I want to highlight here. One, the whole Amazonian thing we just spoke about. Now the Amazonian rainforest is so vast, and it holds so many secrets. people even underestimate the size of the congo rainforest ki how vast it is how difficult it is to go inside a jungle because think about it all of us have only experienced jungles in national parks where there are roads made there are pathways made but a jungle is actually slushy mud with a lot of trees where you can get stuck in the mud there are wild animals snakes insects snakes. there's an infinite number of difficulties to enter a jungle combine that with the vastness of it the size of it like how big it is like i remember there was this one i don't know why i did this but a 100 km walk i had to go on for some event we even logged it we were kind of forced into it anyway that's a whole separate story it was a 100 km walk over 36 hours or you have to just keep walking where was it it was around pavna lake where is that pavna lake is like just outside lonavla i believe oh okay yeah um but it's in the middle of nature you you walk through like uh, villages basically you know where the houses are like made of straw and all like oh, that was a whole kind of like i hated that experience it bombed my knees and because you had to go up and down mountains you know i had blisters on my feet it was physically the most taxing thing i've done i even reached a moment of a runner's high you know what a runner i know what it yeah. is yes yeah when you keep <clears throat> walking up to a point where we had to walk all night it was 36 hours of continuous walking with like an hour of sleep an hour <laughs> of sleep that's a, i that's a whole other experience i can go on about it all all day all night uh my point of highlighting that is the distance that we covered e, there was 10 checkpoints each checkpoint was roughly on an average 10 kilometers that's how you do 100 kilometers so 10 kilometers initially you'll do your first checkpoint over 2 hours and that's when you realize how big 10 kilometers is <laughs> and then you have 10 more 10 kilometers you have 9 more 10 9 more yeah and then you have 9 more 10 kilometers and then you realize how large 100 kilometers is and that's just 100 kilometers what is that on the scale of the planet what is that on the scale of when you're comparing it to a forest which also means how little of forests are discovered like now in 2020 and 21 we are discovering all these amazonian secrets so imagine how many secrets are just hidden inside jungles we don't even know what's out there So there was this guy who uh, came on the Joe Rogan experience. He's an explorer. I forgot his name. David Cho, I believe his name is. And uh, he tried looking for the Congo dinosaur. I see. Yeah. And uh, he described his experience of going into that forest. He's like we were just traveling inside the forest for three days, four days. We became delirious because we couldn't tell what direction is what. We couldn't tell where we wanted to go. Him and his co-traveler sort of went crazy. Mm-hmm. 
he's like i i that guy was treating me like shit so i almost reached a point of wanting to kill him <laughs> and i almost killed him like he he went that crazy and then he's like on the fourth or fifth day they found pygmies in the uh, congo rainforest like the local tribal um and pygmy came up to them was very nice was like what you would expect from a friendly tribal person you know in the middle of nature offered them fruit uh he said are you guys lost so this guy said yeah and then they realized that they hadn't even gone deep inside the forest they were near the outskirts only <laughs> and for 3 days they were just circling like near the outskirts that's when he realized the vastness and he asked those pygmies about that stegosaurus the mukele what's it mbembe mukele mbembe and those guys said yeah yeah it's right here we see it all the time wow and you know only the tribals who know that jungle well who know the geography of that place well they are the people who will be able to discover the real secrets of these jungles so it it just this david chose podcast with joe rogan plus everything i've been reading about the amazonian rainforest it's made me understand how many secrets of zoology and just the general world we have not even discovered yet maybe there are dinosaurs maybe there are i mean we know there are dinosaurs out there the avian dinosaurs the birds mm. so it's possible that certain other dinosaurs may perhaps have survived somewhere i mean some of these rainforests are as big as oceans mm. i'm sure the amazon rainforest is as big as the mediterranean sea perhaps mm. so that's an enormous expanse of uh, geography isn't it and yeah. there's so much there that could be hidden yeah. so many species of animals so many species of plants medicinal plants and what not mm. and possibly certain animals that have never been found mm. it is certainly possible mm. so also also people take snakes and crocodiles for granted they are dinosaurs they're living dinosaurs like they are reptiles the large reptiles which are carnivores I mean that's that's what they and they've seen so much of the earth you know, crocodiles have eaten dinosaurs haven't they yeah they used yeah. to eat dinosaurs in the yeah. past <laughs> yeah 100% uh why did they survive why did they survive the whole uh, dinosaur extinction i think they they just too hardy to die they're just too hard too too tough to kill off mm. are, you fasc- are you fascinated by that phase of human history i mean not human history world history over i over. am i am I'm, i think crocodiles haven't ch- their design hasn't changed over 150 million years i think mm. they've stayed the same maybe the size has changed sometimes sometimes you have got in the past you had bigger crocodiles the megafauna again. megafauna again but the design overall is has remained the same more or less mm. so it's a very good time tested design and maybe that's why they survived all this time mm. this long mm. and maybe they're going to die at our hands who knows yeah yeah it's possible yeah that's that's pretty crazy um you know i i've i've gone scuba diving thrice in my life all right the first time was in seychelles mm-hmm. uh seychelles is supposed to be a hotbed for zoology uh marine life basically marine biology uh i went on a guided scuba dive where one guy actually takes you with him they, they teach you the basics they teach you how to control um uh, your body and you know you follow the rules of scuba diving but it's it's just a basic class and then they kind of handhold you and take you down uh later on when i told some of my advanced diver friends they told me that seychelles is a not dangerous place to dive but it's sort of an advanced kind of diving area because there's a lot of sharks there I see. there's a lot of like difficulties in diving there there's also a fantastic amount of stuff to see uh have you seen zindagi na milegi dobara I think I have. It's the one with Farhan Akhtar, Ritik Roshan, and Abhay Deol, where they go to Spain. Yeah, that flamenco dance. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes. So, flamenco song. Yeah. Uh, Senorita. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a there's a scene in that where they go scuba diving, and Ritik Roshan comes out of the water. He has a fear of swimming. He has a fear of the water, and he comes out of the water, and he's seen life because he's seen all that life underwater. No? So I was expecting that that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a beautiful version of life and colors underwater. <laughs> right mm-hmm. so i was confident i i fell like the way you you enter dive is that you have to fall back okay you have okay. to fall back from your boat to take you to the middle of the ocean you can barely see land then you just fall back and you got to trust your guy who's taking you down etc you're diving over a coral reef so i fell back i dived there's a there's like this rope they attach that takes you to the bottom right so you're pulling yourself down into the water and my guy he pats me on my side and he's like look there so i turned and there was a massive whale <laughs> it was probably like this room around us it was maybe at least 10 times the size of this room 10 rooms like this it was wow. that massive and i barely saw it right it must have been like 100 meters away from me 
and I saw it kind of doing this weird backflip where if I just glanced at it, I may not have even known it's a whale. I would have thought it's some sort of a underground mount, under underwater mount. I would have probably thought it was an underwater mountain. But then I saw that mountain move and kind of do a backflip and go away. And the visibility wasn't more than like 150, 200 meters maybe, maybe even less than that. That's why it kind of disappeared into the blue. But my first experience with scuba diving was understanding how small we are as human beings in the grand scale of things. Yes. And then I definitely saw those colors, etc. Fortunately, I didn't see any sharks. I would have shat myself <laughs> underwater. I hate sharks. But... Uh, uh, it was it was an eye-opening experience, not because of the colors and the life I saw, but just the scale of things and the scale of the ocean. Scuba diving is not for me, for sure. You know, people romanticize scuba diving and all that. When you're down there, again, you're with a pack of human beings. Even sharks are scared of packs of human beings. Have you seen this lady called Ocean Ramsey? I have. Yeah, she, yes. she dives at tiger sharks and great whites. Great so, whites, yes. And, and she controls them. She's like, there's a way to interact with these creatures. Yes, yes. Also, the way we have five senses, sharks have a sixth, sixth sense, sense, which yes. senses electricity. Yes. Including your body's electricity. Yeah. Because all of us have natural currents, which is our nervous system flowing through our body. So if we're scared, the currents flow in a certain way. And that's what sharks are able to sense. That's how they are able to understand, okay, this is prey because it's scared of me because the currents in its body are flowing a certain way. Um, so Ocean Ramsey talks about how you need to be calm underwater. You need to interact with sharks nicely. But still, I don't want to interact with sharks. Um, speaking about sharks and crocodiles, their megafauna, like, have you heard of the megalodon? Of course, the meg. Yeah, the meg. Yes. I think movies have been made about it. Yes, yes. Uh, the meg um, is, again, supposedly still out there somewhere. Or at least some creature like the meg, which is a massive shark, which is like a super shark or whatever. In the same way, they say that somewhere out there, there might be a super crocodile also. Salt, a saltwater crocodile is basically larger than normal crocodile. Yes, it is. But they say there's probably some sort of dinosaur out there. And there are these really large creatures which are kind of really deep inside the ocean. But uh, that's that's my little take on cryptozoology, sir. I'd love for you to kind of close this cryptozoology topic with some fascinating thing that stays in your head. I would say we need to keep an open mind. The, the oceans are so enormous. It's certainly possible for something as large as, as the megalodon or an enormous crocodile to, to lurk out there. It's entirely possible. We know that there are these uh, colossal squid mm. that live in the depths of the ocean, many mm. kilometers down. Mm. And these were not really discovered until just a few decades ago. Mm. People used to talk about them, but they had never been actually photographed mm. or there was no proof of them. So it's possible that, that there are other species of animals out there. It's very mm. possible. Mm. And uh, we hear reports from time to time about some strange uh, creatures being observed, some snake-like creatures and some enormous like megalodon kind of uh, fish. Mm. So it's certainly possible that these things exist out there and we still don't know about them. Mm.